So our last Ocean News episode was pretty bleak. We spoke about the unprecedented levels of coral bleaching and death in Florida, but today we're counteracting this. We're focusing on good news stories, conservation wins. So yeah, welcome to Tully's Marine Tales and I really hope you enjoy this video. First up, the big Montana climate youth trial, which I'm sure you guys have heard about. Now at first this might not necessarily scream ocean conservation. La Montana is like a landlocked state in the middle of Northern America, but I'm sure I don't need to explain to you guys that everything on our planet is linked. And the actions that we take, whether we live next to the ocean or inland, all impacts the ocean in some way or the other. Especially when we're talking about big things like climate change, as we saw in our very depressing Florida coral bleaching video. So this trial was groundbreaking in many different ways. It was the first ever constitutional climate trial in US history. The group that took on the state were youths, basically kids under the age of 18. And in what was a really surprising twist, they won. Montana has a pretty unique constitution in that it specifically states that the state and each person shall maintain and improve a clean and healthful environment in Montana for present and future generations. And so the judge ruled in favor of these youths who accused the state of violating their constitutional rights to a clean and healthy environment by still promoting the use of fossil fuels. So Montana's electricity generation is still heavily reliant on coal and even in their state's policy goals, they still aim to like promote and develop gas and oil exploration and use. And I think what made this case really unique was that they were not talking about how climate change negatively impacts the environment or nature or animals or whatever, but they spoke about how climate change impacts them negatively on a personal level. They all got up, they all testified and told stories of how they can't go outside in the month of August because of increased smoke from wildfires making them sick, how rivers in their backyard were almost drying up because of droughts, how increased Extreme weather events like hailstorms and windstorms were causing damage, how their hobbies were impacted. For instance, they couldn't go snowboarding anymore and how all of these things were coming together to impact their families, livelihoods, impact their physical health, impact their emotional health. So they really made it personal and brought it down to a human level. And I really think this is the future in terms of how we should tackle climate action. You know, I think we as scientists have made a mistake in historically framing the argument around how climate change negatively impacts the environment. You know, we talk about things like coral bleaching or ocean acidification or how animals will change their behavior and so on and so forth. And while people like you and me might care about that, most people don't. And most people are not going to be changing the behavior to save nature. But reframe the argument about how climate change negatively impacts us personally, how our property is going to be destroyed because of wildfires, or how we get sick because of smoke from wildfires, or how drought means that, you know, there's no there's not enough water for us, or our farmers lose their crops, lose their livestock because of these extreme weather events. This is when people will start to take notice. And I do think there's hope for the future because it's literally kids like this who have grown up their whole lives hearing about climate change. I mean, one of the plaintiffs was saying that he watched the documentary Chasing Ice at the age of four. So you know, it's these kids who are fed up with our mistakes. They're demanding change. They're suing governments. They're showing up at courthouses, state houses, voting stations, and they are the ones that are speeding up this change. You can have as many Paris climate agreements as you want, but unless we as the people demand on change, governments and corporations are not going to change. You look at all of the big societal changes that have happened in the past. You look at something like women's right to vote or abolishing apartheid. All of these things happen because we as people demanded it, not because governments or corporations said they were going to do it. So this is what the climate crisis needs now. And I say a huge kudos to these kids for sticking their hands up, being brave enough to take on the state. Um, they're super encouraging, super inspiring. It's been a landmark case in the climate litigation space in the United States. It's going to inspire future court cases. And it just goes to show that we and the planet can win against these power hungry, profit hungry idiots who still promote fossil fuels. So hurrah, hurrah. 
Now our second story is much more directly related to the ocean and concerns the controversial topic of deep sea mining. Now there was a lot of flurry and activity around this topic a couple of weeks ago when the International Seabird Authority was hosting discussions on whether industrialized deep sea mining should be allowed or should be banned. However, this all kind of came to a rather abrupt end when they decided to postpone the decision until 2025, which is not the ideal outcome, but it is still encouraging. Now, the whole discussion of whether to allow or ban deep sea mining kind of began in 2021 when a tiny Pacific island nation declared that they wanted to start mining a mineral rich underwater ridge. At present, there is no industrial deep sea mining and with good reason. Deep sea habitats are incredibly fragile and they've remained unchanged for hundreds of years. You know, down there in the dark, deep depths, there's it's very cold, there's very little oxygen, there's very little food, there's very little light. So life is really hard and moves at very slow paces. And animals are hyper adapted to survive these really tough conditions. Now you want to add in deep sea mining, which is essentially like chucking a bomb down there. It lets off huge plumes of sand, which take forever to settle. It bulldozes entire ecosystems and it lets off toxic byproducts. Those ecosystems would be absolutely destroyed and they would not recover for many, many years, if ever. We as scientists 100% do not understand the full impacts that deep sea mining would have on those deep sea ecosystems. And surprisingly, even a lot of big corporate companies are saying that deep sea mining is a bad idea. You have companies like Google, BMW, Samsung, Volvo, all boycotting minerals that have been mined from the deep sea. And you have countries jumping on board too, with uh, governments from Chile, France, Costa Rica, all leading efforts to ban deep sea mining. So you have these big players on board who are putting up their hands and saying, no, we don't want any part of this then you know it's got to be a bad idea. So while the issue is far from over, the fact that they have realized that there are far too many unknowns to make a decision is definitely promising. You know, we as humans tend to act first and think about the consequences later. So the fact that we're thinking about the consequences at the start is definitely a step in the right direction. And we can hope that as the discussions continue next year in 2024, that it will follow a similar environmentally friendly instead of profit friendly trajectory. So that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you know of any conservation wins for the planet or for the ocean, please leave them down in the comments below. It's really uplifting and inspiring to hear about all of the amazing work that people are doing for our planet and for our oceans. So with that, I hope you all have a very happy day and I'll see you in the next video.